What's up dudes? A lot of people wonder how I can afford my lavish RV lifestyle. Right now I'm not technically currently in an RV. I'm in someone else's kitchen tied on the floor. Uh, dreams cost money folks. And uh, so yes, good uh, while I'm in here I figured I'd show you a little tips on how to do some things and what not to do. As you can see, these previous a-holes put it down on plywood. You don't put cementitious products on wood, which is why it is very easy to take up. If you ever see someone putting just thin set mortar mix and a ceramic tile, whatever stone tile, right down on plywood, uh, rub their nose in it like a dog because they're fucking stupid or tell them they can't work anymore. And uh, in order to get it up, usually when it's like this, if it's not on concrete, it comes up real easy, which is again the problem of why I'm actually now in here to do the floor. So you just get a little old scraper here. Just tap, tap. That's easy. Alright, and once I get it all cleaned up, I will show you how to set it up, put some board down to properly receive tile. Aren't you lucky? You see, it's kind of a, it's an old house, so they have substrate on top of substrate. And it's ply like first you got just uh, boards and then laminate and then plywood on top of that. You need to make sure there's nothing loosey goosey down there. This is where people shortcut things, that's why your tile gets all cracked and jacked up. Do this as many times and get out all the bullshit, like this kind of bullshit. Anything that's possibly loose, then hoover it again, crack it up, check it again, hoover it again, do this as many times, do not shortcut this step as the people who did this floor previously did, which is why you had a lot of cracked tiles, so very important step. That's what I was worried about. When you get to the joists, these are actually structural support for your house. I know some of the subfloor was rotten, a little bit of termite damage, and uh, it's basically this is bad. So this will need to be replaced before you go any farther, because that again is support for your floor. All right, as we were tapping around, just tapping around, I noticed there's some rotten subfloor, so I pulled that up, only to reveal some rotten joists. So we had to rip a lot of the joists out. Um, that's it. That's kind of the thing with old houses. You never really know. You start digging into it. And you start seeing all kinds of problems you didn't initially anticipate. That's part of the charm of old houses. You take the good with the bad. Just the same as old women. You know what I mean? They got character. A lot of things going on. Good with. I prefer old women. I prefer old houses. But the danger is there's some latent underlying issues there that you wouldn't quite expect. Sometimes it's something good, like old brickwork or nice old woodwork in there. Uh, Sometimes maybe she knew a lot of tricks from a previous man. Maybe she can cook real well. New houses, new women. You can't really expect that. Maybe everything's put together and fresh, but there's no real character there. Nothing. Uh... But occasionally, even with a new one, there's still issues underneath. But that's the thing with women. Is and sometimes you buy this, you get the thing, the woman or the house, and shit starts falling apart and they're like man your house is a piece of shit it's like I didn't know all that was underneath there that's why you don't want to be like trying to work on two old houses at once because there's a lot of stuff women too just try to stick with one at a time one old I mean like I said I prefer an old but whew, sometimes you got no idea but in this case we were able just to sister in some joists sometimes you can just talk them through it you just really get them to talk about what it is and it's fine. Sometimes there ain't no fixing that shit and you just gotta patch it up together and try to sell that thing and hopefully someone else buys it and you're like, oh, I didn't know that was there. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, but you try to do things right when you, before you close it back up. That way whoever gets the woman next is and dealing with all this bullshit, you don't do that to somebody. All right, well anyway. Uh, I've got these all sistered in, ready to put in some new subfloor, and then we'll keep powering forward. Alright, so let's do it to it. Alright, before I close this up, I want to show you this is very important. I added a little beam here. This is the original, this is another sistered in joist. This is a joist. This is the original subfloor. This is where I sistered this in. It goes from the footer, and where it meets, I added a support. 
where you're touching dirt, this is an old house, so there's dirt underneath it, you want to use pressure treated because that will keep it from rotting. All right, I'm gonna add a couple more here. These I just ran across, they're under the other subfloor. This is on the joist where it meets the subfloor. These are very important because you want to be screwed in where any, where your, any two pieces of subfloor meet, right? Right, because that'll keep it from shifting and because your other piece of subfloor is gonna be here. And you don't and you want it to be screwed in right next to each other so it's tight and stays together because wood shifts a little bit and especially on tile and all that stuff it could cause cracks and whatnot so the more secure it is the better for everybody that little area is closed up this area here we're ready to close up it is uh it was very important that we take out the rotten wood because this is a load bearing wall and we had some bug damage, it looks like. I keep saying we. I didn't have any bug damage. The homeowner did. And uh, a lot of you still see some of it there. But on all the structural bits, we sprayed it real well. Ripped out all the bad wood. Put in some new joists. Again, it looks like all kinds of weirdness here. But everything's screwed and tight and secure. So ready to close that up. Alright, we struggled for a bit. Uh, she had a lot of issues to work through, but now she's ready. You don't want to rush things. You want to get things right before you move forward with the old girl. So we got through everything, and now I think she's ready to receive me. All of me. Like I said, if you do things right, you get everything sorted first, clear, all the underlying issues taken care of. When she takes you, she'll take you forever. All right, we're trying to put ceramic tile onto a wood floor. It's a big no-no to put it straight onto plywood. A lot of people make that mistake, and a lot of people waste a lot of money. It's a cementitious product on a piece of wood. Wood expands and contracts cold and hot a lot differently than stone does. So what you can do, if you don't have, in a perfect world, all floors are concrete which receive tile, but sometimes we don't, we don't live in a perfect world. So if they make different stuff, they make things like called Dura-Rock, or this is a hardy backer board. It's uh, basically, it's about, this is quarter inch and cementitious and you put it down on top of the subfloor, plywood, stagger it against it, but uh, I will show you how to properly install this bad daddy. Alright, go ahead and mix you up some thin set. Don't put too much in your bucket that it gets too hard to work with. It's no race, no rush. You don't need to go crazy. A little bit of water. I like to use a drill and a dryer to make this. I got one bucket of thin set mixed up, one bucket of water, one sponge to keep my work area clean, one notch trowel, one little poo poo trowel. And, uh, you don't want to spread any more on the area than need be, otherwise you're going to be walking through mortar and all that. But when you get going, first I swept and I vacuum, but I'm also going to damp wash the area that I'm about to work in. You want it as clean as possible. There's a little bit of paper from the old antique laminate, but that is not coming up, so that is no threat to me. I don't fear that paper. All right, and this uh, may seem like common sense, but you don't want to paint yourself into a corner. You don't want to thin set yourself into a corner either. And you work your way out. We got our thin set all spread out, as you can see, so we're ready to drop our board. You want to get it close into the corner before you drop it. You don't want to slide it through until you get it where you want it to be. And then we screw her down. Oh, I almost forgot. Also, 
leave a little gap about an eighth of an inch between the edge of your board and any side surfaces an eighth of the board between the next board. It's very important. Again, things expand and contract. That's very, very important. I'll show you very quickly how to cut this. A T-square works well, like a drywall T-square, but I don't have one, so I'm going to use a piece of vinyl siding, whatever. Any sort of straight edge will do. I've marked it. 30 inches. 30 inches. A straight edge. Utility knife. Choppy chop chop. Third time's the charm. Take it to the edge of your table. Snaps right off. Real clean, no dust. And you're moving along. I'm going to show you a couple Luke tricks of the trade, right? Um, in order to cut the board, uh, you just use a standard utility knife, score it. I want to show you this one because this is kind of a uh, uh, cutting out for a register. And you'll just, again, you just use your utility knife and you have a kind of a funky cut like this instead of like on drywall where you got to use a saw and cut it all the way down. You just score it, put a little something behind there. I just use a flat bar. Take it. There you go. Then you just clean up that little bit there. Again, utility knife, don't use a saw or anything, it gets a little bit dusty and you get all that concrete garbage in your mouth hole. Pow. Alright, we're kind of trucking along with the Hardy Backer board. I just wanted to show you a couple things. Uh, again, I have gaps between each board. I will show you why later and put a shit ton of screws in there, but as many as you can. But that's about the proper screw spacing. A lot of people short out on that. I do not because I'm a badass. Um, yes, and also another very important thing. See where there's seams in the subfloor. Never ever let your seam meet up with this seam. Like if I had two pieces of hardy backer board, I would not put them like that. You want to bridge those gaps. The more, the better. The farther you bridge it, the better. That avoids cracking in your tile later. Important step in this bullshit is you gotta take some of this shit right here and put it up in this dude. Fill it, drive it in there real hard. Get it all up in there. And you take this, don't buy that. They're trying to sell you this bullshit. Uh, hardy backer tape, but this is drywall mesh tape. It's the same thing, it just costs, unless you want to spend two extra dollars for no reason, then I don't want to stop you. But I wouldn't. And then you take this. Oh, this isn't smooth at all. Okay, pretend that was real cut off real smooth, so I look professional. Sit this mesh tape in there. And just drive it on home now. Plow. Plow. Nice and smooth. And what that does, it uh, once that sets up, it locks all the floor together, and then your next day, come back and you're ready to rock. Mm, drive it all the way in. You want to go balls deep in those cracks. Bottom out in there. All right, the board's down, the thin set's dry, and we're finally ready to start putting down tile. But before we can do that, we need to take time to lay it out properly. A lot of people shortcut this step and just start jamming a tile, one full tile right in the corner, and then it puts your whole grid off. And like this side, you have a full tile, and then the other side of the room, you have a skinny little tile, and it looks like shit. So uh, lay it, take your time to lay it out, square out some lines properly, and I'll show you how to do this. This room is a irregular shape, so you need to sort of make some decisions on how you're going to do it. They're, they went with these kind of long wood tiles and they're going to go lengthways in the room. And uh, you want to lay it out to where you'll have, figure out where you want your full piece to be. 
in this room because it goes to two different size rooms we're going to I want to start to where in this doorway it's one full tile I'm going to mock it up two different ways either there or where it'll split right down the middle with the cabinets and stuff so I'll show you how to do that alright homies so here's what our basic setup well the entire setup of the floor is going to look like we're just going on an offset pattern but I want you to see this that's a quarter inch gap if you see from the edge of that to the edge of this tile 11 and 3 quarters. If I flip it 11 and 3 quarters again going this way. So this is very very important because you're going to be following with the spacers it will stay the same. If you mess this up on the first step you'll mess it up on the entire floor. So this is where the actual placement or where the first tile is going to be. It's along my control line so that's where the first tile will go. So now that this is set out I can mark a line on the edge of this and then I will run two lines this way off my initial control line. So that way when I start this row and this row and the rest of the floor will follow they'll keep the same gap and then you'll split the difference on these on this setup. You with me? I sure hope so. What you want to do? All right. Bucket a thin set, not too much because you're not going to be going real fast on the first run. Bucket of water and a sponge. Keep your tools clean, keep your hands clean so you're not getting thin set on the top of the tile. Get your spacers and have plenty of tile ready to go so you're not getting up and down. I invested in a nice pair of knee pads for my and so. Alright. This is my first guy here, and I got my chalk line and the starting point, so I know I don't need. I don't want my thin set on this side of the line. It doesn't need to be there because I'm not putting tile there yet. Just get a little bit on the ground here. I'm not going crazy. But you want a full and solid bed of mortar underneath your tile. And you also need a level. Invest in a good quality level. Spend $25 to buy one with a where you can see it from up the top. Up the top. Up top. So you want to be as level as possible. I know there's a hump in the floor there and it drops in the floor over there. So I'm going to bring this up just a little bit so that can go low. And I'll add there to try to cheat it. And keep it as level as possible. Alright. So again, I want a good solid bed of mortar under each tile that keeps them from cracking. the whole tile to be supported. All right, that's where my first tile goes this way. Follow my chalk line. Hopefully you can see it here. Don't press it yet. All right. All right, I am not level. The floor is unlevel, so I'll need to. I'm gonna take this up and build this up here. Take your time with each tile. Don't just go crazy. But you want a good solid bed underneath the whole tile. But I'm gonna build this up just a tiny bit here, but more here, so that way I can follow that along and keep the whole thing straight and level. All right, I'm level. All this along the edge here. I want to drive that in underneath. Kind of a two hand operation. Keep your edges clean. If you want thin set on the top of your tile, you have to scrape it off later, which is not nice. I know other tiles are going here right away, but again, keep your roof area clean and then your tiles will stay clean and you'll be happy later. Also makes it much easier to see your lines. You don't want any gaps, especially in the corners here. Like this is no good. So I'll take this. I'm going to build my corners up. I'll do this better when I got two hands, but essentially that's the practice. You're going to support the tile with the other hand. Just keep packing it in and filling it up. Alright. 
that's our first set tile, so let's get to it. All right, very, very quickly, I wanted to show you this. You can see, you can see how built up it is from one end to the other. But like this, you don't want little gaps like that. Yeah, you try to flow in it, build it up underneath. You press it into it. You scrape and clean what's left over. Keep it clean, well supported. But yeah, because your floor is not going to, if your floor is not level like this one, you need to keep it built up and the whole time keep taking your sponge, wiping it clean, keeping the thin set off the top of the tile. Be patient, take your time. Unless you want to waste the money you spent on tile or have to come back later and chip it out or maybe just like doing shitty work. I don't know. But yeah, try to do it right. Anyway, this is it. You kind of had to build, because the floor dips down so much. You're coming up almost an inch at this point, but it's important you take your time. That way you get the floor nice and level. You just get into a groove. I don't even rush it in there. Tiles look like shit. It's kind of zen. I find like a little zen feeling from it. Kind of meditative. Just doing a good job and taking your time. And making it look nice. Treat each tile individually. Like each tile is like one of your babies. And if you raise it right, it'll be secure. And have a good foundation for the rest of its tile life. Or you can just slam it down. Just crank it on out. And then who knows what kind of piece of shit it'll turn into, you know? Alright dudes, to cut these it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. These are long skinny ones. So they're very easy to cut. Uh, sometimes you could rent a wet saw if you want to, but just I just use a grinder because I'm a badass. And uh, what you do, obviously you measure the length you want. Marky mark mark. Get a square so it's square. Right? Safety glasses, I want to protect these beautiful brown eyes of mine. And then you don't just jam it in. Don't just jam it in right away. You gotta just let it, ease it in, let the weight of the saw cut it. That means your blade will last forever, but if you just it'll crack your tile, do all kinds of bad things, especially on the first pass. Because these are porcelains, so they're porcelain with a little coating on the top. Also, you need to lay out irregular cuts sometimes. There's not many on this floor, but uh, I'm going to show you a video from 2014 that I made entitled Making Irregular Tile Cuts. Run video. Oh, when did you get here? Oh, I didn't see you. Uh, anyway, I'm uh, laying out some tile and I'll show you a little trick while you're here. Like, you see this little corner, and you might be, see how it's kind of tough like that? And you might be thinking, oh my god, how could anyone lay that out? It doesn't make sense, like you'd need like a computer brain to be able to figure out something like that. And I say, no, you just need a piece of paper here, right? You just take your paper and you kind of, here, let me bring you back down. And you just lay it like it's a tile. Pal, there's my corner. You get this all straight here. Chippy chip chip. Lay that out straight. Corner, corner, pal, pal, pal. 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 Easy. They just cut it out. You lay it on top of your tile. You got a template. Boom, you're done. A lot of people are like, man, that's pretty smart. You're a smart guy. And I'm like, I am. And some people are probably thinking, it's not fair that this man is so ruggedly beautiful, yet also so intelligent. Like, it's not a fair game out there. And some women are probably looking at their man and being like, dude, I settled. 
I definitely settled for a lesser man. But sometimes the Lord makes a limited edition top of the line model that he doesn't put into mass production. And that's just how it is. And I'm sorry for you, but... Oh, perfect. Perfect first time every time. Let me show you guys a trick. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. It wasn't really in my eye. I just did it right to the side like that. I'm crazy. Pretty good, huh? You hear an exciting moment of the job. You hear to witness the last tile of this one room. This room was, uh... Much like a bad relationship. Like, I didn't think there was any way out of it uh, without doing some damage to myself, but uh, or someone else. But no, I stuck in there, lined this up, you had to put a line underneath it. I had to sit her down and explain to her that just we weren't right for each other. I mean, I cleaned up some loose ends. I got all my stuff together first. You get all your stuff, you act like you're doing some house cleaning, you get it all out in the box, put it in your truck like you gotta go do some things, and then you take care of it. Otherwise, you gotta keep coming back, like, getting your old baseball cards and a little pair of shoes. That or you just cut and run. You can cut and run too, but you gotta plan ahead. Last thing you do is be knocking on the door. Or if she's in your house, just be like, hey, I was cleaning up. And then you just have it on a box. And then when it happens, you're like, here's your stuff. So, otherwise, and then get that number off your phone. Cause you don't want to be like drunk two o'clock in the morning being like, oh, I miss you. Cause then you got to do it all over again. All right, dudes, we've reached the light of, at the end of a very long, dark tunnel and we got all the tile down. Now what I'm going to do is spend about an hour or two looking for any spots like this. It has thin set on the tile itself. I'm going to take a little scraper. You see this little spot here? Any spot like that, you want to get off before we start grouting. And then once we do that, like back there is kind of bad. Definitely right there. We're going to want that, especially stuff like this, where you can see we'll thin set will come up through the grout. Little spots like that. Uh, this part is tedious and irritating, but it is a necessary part of the game. So once we get this all cleaned up, don't skip this step, because otherwise you'll have little gray stuff sticking in your grout. And... It'd be quite a shame to just start getting sloppy now. Alright dudes, uh, we're ready to grout. Uh, just know grouting is a long and tedious process and to be patient. Don't work too big an area at one time because you have to, especially this is black grout. And that's about the consistency you want it to be. Use your little pointy trout, put a little bit down. Spread it out with a spreader. Spend the money to get a good one because if you just get one of these spongy ones, it's gross. You just sucks it all up. And have yourself a big bucket of water. This you will change it out about a thousand times during this job. But that is the name of the game. Again, do about a four by four area. Spread it, drive it as deep into the gaps as you can. And then wipe it clean with a sponge. Empty your bucket. Wipe it again, empty your bucket. Do it about four times. And you're gonna come back and you're gonna do it twice the next day too. Uh, just be ready for it, because that's what it's all about. All right, let's get rolling. All right, I squeegeed it off real good. You squeegee as good as possible so there's less on the tile. And you just keep wiping it. Don't put down a lot of pressure. Because that would build you nice even gaps in the brick or nice even grout lines and even though that sort of looks clean now as soon as that dries it'll be smoky and gray this is a long drawn out process be very careful for big clumps of grout like that because that will be hard to get off later so again leave yourself just a workable area and then hit it and quit it well and that's pretty much the name of the game if you watched all this thank you if you have any questions comment below uh, if you liked it, maybe subscribe. I don't know. Watch some other videos. I got one on woodworking. It's really nice. Or if you got any other videos that you need got questions about, uh, just hit me up. All right.